Aside from just your digitizing input tools, you also have editing tools available to you, which means if you have an element that you don't particularly like how something is being sewn, you can go in and add a stitch direction, change a stitch direction, add a hole, add a splice, alter the entry and exit point. You've got the ability to go in and change how things are embroidering. To start, let's look at this piece of cheese. Um, right now it's looking very cheddar-ish and I like Swiss. I want to add some holes to this. So what I can do is select the fill and then as soon as I do, my editing tools become available to me. Now entry and exit, stitch direction, all those are fine for me, but I really want to add a hole. So I'm going to select the insert hole tool and then above it has the outline type and that's a hole, that's what I want. But now I can digitize just as if I was digitizing a fill. Inside of here, I'm going to hit enter, and it's it's just like if I was digitizing a hole while digitizing the fill. And I can keep going and keep going until I have as many as I would like. You can even use these with the automatic shape tools. which can make things a little bit faster for you sometimes. To get out of that, just hit Escape or select your editing mode. Now other things that are available in there. If I click and hold for a half a second, I get more options. I get Insert Split Line. So holes had to connect. A split line does not, and it can digitize outside of the form, inside of the form, wherever you want. So I'm just going to digitize just like I would a walk. And when I hit enter, you'll notice that the needle penetrations changed. So a split line, let me hit escape to get out of the tool. A split line lines up all the needle penetrations along that split. So you can create definition inside of a form while it's sewing, it doesn't have to be multiple layers. You can do it while it's sewing and all of your needle penetrations line up. And that is with the insert split line. There's another tool in here, insert fill island. So if I digitize a piece, now this one will have to meet back up with itself. Let me hit escape to get out of that. I have a different fill pattern occurring inside of this area, but it still stitches all at once. The fill pattern just changes. You can even select the fill island itself, right click, go to properties, and you can change what that's doing. So I could change this to kind of a zigzag pattern and I could shorten the stitch length and now you can see that zigzag starting to happen throughout that little bitty shape. Now this is pretty small. If it gets bigger, that pattern's a little more noticeable. So you can add definition, you can add texture, you can add changes by adding fill islands. You can add split lines, which just line up all your needle penetrations. One thing to be careful with this, so I'm going to get into my stitch direction editing tool. If I line up My stitch direction with a split line it kind of hides it it's really hard to see so let me move my entry point and my exit point and now that's really hard to see it's still there and there are needle penetrations falling along there, but it's only along the stitch line. So if a stitch line lines up with it, well, they're all going to line up with it, but it's every 30 or 40 points, whatever your stitch length is set to. So it, it can really mask a split line if you're trying to use it to define a shape or an area, or in this case, the vein of a leaf. So I'm going to delete that fill island, I do it by selecting the fill and then selecting the island itself, pressing delete on my keyboard, it goes away. 
I'm going to grab my stitch direction tool and I'm going to change this so that I get a little bit more definition. The other thing you can do while you have your stitch direction tool, you can add more. You can right click on them and curve them. Now really extreme curves are going to cause problems in stitch spacing because you can't really curve a stitch, but you can give it a nice gentle path to follow. If you wanted to digitize a curved stitch direction instead of just editing one in, you could click and hold for half a second and go select the curve. And this you digitize just like a walk stitch. Left click, right click, left click, hit enter. And now I have that stitch direction added and my tool is still selected. I could still be creating more stitch directions. So I'm going to hit escape to get out of it. Now I've got my lovely leaf, curved stitch directions. It's got a vein being defined by a split line. I've got my cheese that I've added holes to. Let's look at some other options. Here we have some lettering that is a fill. And well, this poor little fill, it, uh, it doesn't even have any stitches in it. If I want, I can grab entry point and exit point, and I can say, I want you to start here, I want you to end here. And just like when I'm digitizing with a complex fill, as soon as I'm done with that entry point and exit point, it swaps over to that stitch direction, and I can say, yep, I want a stitch direction here. Unlike when I'm digitizing with a traditional method, it will remain selected so I can add more, I can right click and drag and add end lines. And then when I'm done, I can hit escape to get out of the tool. I want that to be a satin stitch because I'm creating some lettering here. Other things we can do, we can edit in splice lines. So I can click and hold for half a second and I can insert normal splice lines. I could insert a curved splice line just like I did a curved stitch direction line on that leaf, or I could have it auto compute by selecting it and it will auto compute whatever I have selected. And it did just what I would have done. Now I'm going to go select my stitch directions and I'm going to edit in some stitch directions. And then I think this would look better as a satin stitch. Here too, you can add your own splice lines. So I'm gonna drag across here, drag across here. And then I'm going to grab my stitch direction editing tool. I'm gonna come in here, 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 and here. And this too, I'm gonna to make a satin. Now let's go grab this R real quick. So you can edit in the pieces if they aren't there to start. Now this R might be a really nice place for that curved splice. So I'm gonna grab a normal splice and I'm gonna come in here. So I would normally split that off as a separate stitch direction there. But then I'm going to click and hold for half a second and I'm gonna grab that curved splice and I'm going to try to left, right, left, and hit enter. If I don't like it, I can edit that splice later. I'm gonna hit escape and I can edit that splice to try to mimic that curve. And then I'm going to grab my stitch direction tool. Let's go in like this and let's come down like that. And then I think here, and here. And then again, that would be better as a satin. So select the fill and then edit in the pieces that you want. So I'm going to grab that splice and I'm going to come across here and here. And then I'm going to grab my stitch direction tool. and edit in some stitch directions. And 
And then let's make that a satin. I think that looks pretty good. Both the stitch direction editing tool and the splice editing tool work just like they do in the graphic conversion assistant. So what we're talking about here works in either place, whether grabbing the tool here or grabbing it in the assistant. Now, if you ever start something and you know I want to start fresh, you have that option. I'm not sure why you would have this, but here we have an example where we have splice lines where we don't want them. We have stitch directions kind of all over the place. Yeah, I, I could edit all of these back out, but I don't have that kind of patience. If you have the stitch direction editing tool selected or the splice tool selected, if you right click, you have the option to clear all the direction lines and now I only have the splices and I can start over. It gets me a lot closer. I still have splices I don't want. If you clear splice lines, it will clear the direction lines as well, because if it didn't, you could have opposing stitch directions, which are invalid. So right click with the stitch direction or splice tool, and you do have the option to clear direction lines, clear splice lines, or auto compute direction lines, or auto compute splice lines. Auto compute splice lines will just add splice lines. Let me clear that. Auto compute direction lines will do both. So with the splice tool and the stitch direction tool, there's kind of a right click little sub option in there for clearing or auto computing. So aside from editing, you can bring in vector elements, and those are essentially shapes without stitches. You can utilize these tools to essentially digitize your designs. So here I have coffeecup.eps. It's loaded in the graphics folder that's loaded in the designs folder that's loaded with your software. And you can just grab those shapes and edit in what you want. So let's grab a curved stitch direction here. And then I'm going to select the handle and grab a normal stitch direction. I'll give it a couple. Now, as I'm doing this, it is automatically selecting the stitch type. So this was small enough that it automatically became a satin. This was large enough that it automatically became a fill. It's also changing my entry and exit point to be very efficient. I can, if I want, change that to insert a trim and have it fill all in one direction, which is what I think I would do. Now, this is something to be careful of with curved stitch directions. Let me hide my artwork for a second, take it out of 3D, and you can see these stitches are getting really kind of weird. Uh, yeah, let's fix that. So I'm going to move my stitch direction a little bit higher up, and that will include that corner. If it comes inside the shape, you can start getting kind of weird directions. And well, it really can't follow that sharp of a curve with that long of a stitch and then come back out. So I'm just going to bring this up, make it a more gentle curve. And now that's going to stitch just fine. So let's finish this design off real quick. So let's go ahead and grab this coffee. And I'll give it a stitch direction. And then I can't see the highlight, but I can certainly grab it and then give it a stitch direction. I'm not even bothering with entry and exit point at this point because it's moving them around to be very, very efficient. And that's completely fine. You can go into properties and if the levels allow it, you can give it all kinds of effects and you can really make these designs your own. So now it's a little irregular. It looks like the ripples on the top of the coffee here. Uh, let's do this one first. Give it all kinds of crazy stitch directions, things I wouldn't normally do. And then let's just go grab that one. And 
And now I'm going to select these. Let's turn off our artwork. And let's go into properties. Let's turn off auto stitch type. I want to be the one to determine. I'm going to turn off underlay, which I would not normally do. But I'm going to put this to none. And I'm going to take the stitch type to an edge fill. And I'm going to lighten up that density quite a bit. And now I've got kind of a steam effect. And here the stitches are not following that curve very well because they're fairly long. If I lower the stitch length, it'll follow that curve a little bit better. Not something I would do on a normal fill, but I think for this it will work just fine. And let's insert a trim here. There we go. So that did not take very long at all, and I got quite a bit of personality into just this very plain little cut. Your editing tools are great for editing in information into your already digitized shapes. If you forgot something or you want to change something, it's totally there for you. If you have the ability to open up vector elements, you can edit in stitches into those just like you would an embroidery element and the order that you put them in is the order in which they will start to sew. You can rearrange that in the project view as well. So it's a nice way to add to your digitizing, but it's also a handy way to digitize vector elements if you just want to grab a piece or two out of a design or if you want to have a little bit more control than going through the assistant.